Well, hello and welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. Once again, I'm recording from San Diego where I've been uh, at different meetings and I am purposely recording again before the market close. All the data and so forth will be updated in the DC Today at the final close. But because I will be in a lunch meeting with a money manager um, for the hour before the market closes and after and won't be able to record after that. I will. I wanted to do this myself as opposed to um, having someone else do it with updated information because there's something I wanted to talk to you about. And so, you know, it doesn't happen very often. I think yesterday I said it's only happened twice before, but you know, sometimes the uh, recording with the final updated numbers is really not that big of a deal. Now, truth be told, it's never a big deal because I don't even know anyone else who does this at all. And I don't even really know every day why we do it, but I hope you get some information out of it. I hope you find it valuable. I know that a lot of you who started listening to or reading or watching the DC Today back during the COVID days that the COVID or markets uh, missive, if you remember that term, was uh, uh, part of what we were wanting to regularly communicate on. I don't care what the market closes at every day and none of you really do either, even if you think you do. Uh, but nevertheless, just for consistency and updated data and, and information, it's kind of nice to have that rhythm of the daily numbers of where the Dow and S&P were and the sectors and the bond yields and oil and all those kind of things. But um, the, the qualitative message for today is more important to me than the quantitative closings. And what that qualitative message is has to do with China, which um, it's interesting that last night all the buzz was about the economic data coming from China Futures dropped on the news uh, very early this morning. Futures indicated a down market, and we've kind of run with that here throughout the day. And so there are people saying, you know, it's really surprising. The People's Bank of China announced a surprise rate cut, and I thought rate cuts were excellent. I thought rate cuts were great. And so why would anyone want to be selling off when the interest rate is going lower and it was unexpected? So it wasn't even like it was priced in. And it's their second rate cut, uh, unexpected rate cut this summer. They had another one in June. Pretty pretty small overall. But nevertheless, in a world in which you, you see higher rates and upward pressure on rates uh, with, with Europe, with US, with Canada, with UK, and then, uh, and then you see China cutting, you would think people would just be so happy that a central bank cuts rates. And this brought me back this morning to what was such an amazing frustration in the Greenspan years pre-financial crisis uh, post 9-11, where there was clearly uh, rate cuts taking place that were totally disconnected from um, reality. And then the post-financial crisis where they got us to the zero bound and stayed there for about seven years. And then of course, during the COVID moment, take away the first few months of kind of insanity and shutdowns, but then staying, it was basically two calendar years at a 0% federal funds rate. And then, you know, this natural sort of response from people like, well, isn't this excellent? Isn't this great? But I just want to remind people of something. The central bank is cutting rates because something is bad. Now, right now, if the central bank in the U.S., the Federal Reserve, were to cut rates, it very possibly would be because they realize that they've overhyped, that they'd be responding to an excess in policy the other way. But China is not cutting rates because things are good, and China is not cutting rates because they want to boost their dot-com stocks. Or, or whatnot. It is a byproduct of using monetary policy to offset something they believe is bad. The notion of a central bank, like in Dave land, where they want to be at the natural rate, get out of the way, let, let market forces set prices, it, that's, that, that doesn't really exist. And, and so um, I freely admit that there could be some scenario where a rate was getting cut and it's not because things are bad. But when these central banks today cut, it's because they see something being negative. And so China announced substantially worse results in consumer spending than had been anticipated, substantially worse results in industrial production. Um, I think that the ongoing business investment, particularly what is needed into their property sector, real estate construction, which they've relied on so heavily for some time, is, is very underwhelming. 
And so to kind of juice the, um, the results there, their central bank is resorting to trying to use monetary policy to create some form of stimulus. I'm going to talk about this in Dividend Cafe on Friday, what, what they may end up doing, what, they, what I pray they don't do, what um, the precedent has been with other developed nations that have gone down this path. But my point being that you have a Dow selling off 300 points today as of the time I'm speaking. We'll see where it closes on the day. We're down 270 at this very second. It's been down roughly around 300 all day. Um, you have that happening because there is some concern of weakening uh, growth in China and then that weakening effect being exported and having an impact in the U.S., that sort of global interconnectedness. And I, I don't think that people should view rate cuts as initially or instinctively a good thing. You know, a lot of U.S. investors, when they would look to rate cuts as something that they were after, it was no other. There was no deeper reasoning than I'm a levered borrower and a levered investor and I will benefit from lower rates. Fair enough. I don't know why people wouldn't necessarily root for their own self-interest, but that's very different than saying, like, aren't rate cuts good? You know, when they're cutting rates because demand is weakening, because there's no incentive for production, where business investment is tailed off, productivity is tailed off, and they're trying to, to um, help the weakening patient by giving them a little bit of, of juice in the form of rate cuts. You could hopefully see why that's not like a great thing. And yet I think the perception has been different for 20 years, 20 plus years now. I've been kind of fighting this, um, this uh, dispersion in, uh, this, in, in instinct about how to respond to this stuff. So China over the last 12, 15 hours gave us case in point. Uh, Fitch also warned today that they're looking at a few credit downgrades on banks. Um, they, uh, Moody's had done the same thing last week. And so there's a little catch up here around the credit ratings of some of the small regional banks. I'm not sure how su su substantial of a story that ought to be. And economic data, core retail sales were up 1% year over, uh, excuse me, in the month of July. And that was double what had been uh, estimated. Online shopping, by the way, is up 12% year over year um, in the U.S., the negative data point today was the NHB Home Builder Survey. Uh, it come down to 50. It was expected to be quite a bit higher. And you had 4, 5, 6% drop between the uh, prospective buyer's traffic, future view, and present situation, different ratings that take place in this Home Builder Survey. And each of those categories saw somewhere between a 4 and a 6% decline. So there's, you know, kind of a little renewed anxiety about where we stand with the home builders. Uh, all the final closing updated numbers of the dctoday.com, as well as the Ask David, where someone had a very thoughtful question about an individual treasury bond versus a portfolio of bonds or a managed fund of bonds and what the different reasoning is around that. It might be worth your read. So I'm going to leave it there, get to my meeting. And I really do appreciate you reading watching and listening the DC today. Brian Seitel will be back uh, with you tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday. I'll be with you in the Dividend Cafe on Friday, um, but I will be out the next two days taking my son to college. That's my plan. Uh, that is all I have to say in the DC today. Mm -hmm.